Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Antibody Discovery by Single B-Cell Screening on Beacon. I am Cassie Saltman of LabRoots and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Xenobiological. To learn more, visit xenobiological.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speaker, Amy Sheng, Technical Account Manager, Sino Biological. Amy, you may now begin your presentation. Welcome, everybody. I'm Amy Shen, the Technical Account Manager of Sino Biological. Welcome to this webinar. In the next 40 minutes, I will walk you through the development of monoclonal antibody through single B cell sorting based on Beacon platform. The webinar will cover the following sections. First, B cell differentiation and development. Second, we will talk about various antibody screening platforms. Then we will get to know what is Beacon platform. The last, we will discuss a couple of case studies using the Beacon platform for antibody screening. B-cell differentiation and development. B-cells are the only immune cells in the body that can produce antibodies. B-cell differentiation and development occurs in two distinctive stages. Development in the central immune organs, which can be simply described as the following sequential process. Common lymphoid progenitor cells to pro-B cells to pre-B cells followed by immature B cells and then mature B cells. This process depends on the bone marrow microenvironment and involves gene arrangement, BCR expression, and negative selection. The second stage is the development in peripheral immune organs, where the mature B cells migrate into the peripheral immune organs and are activated by specific antigens with the help of T cells. These activated B cells undergo proliferation and differentiation, thereby forming germinal centers. Mature B cells differentiate into plasma cells and memory B cells. Plasma cells are terminally differentiated B cells whose main function is to produce antibodies. Memory B cells, however, can survive for a long time in the body. Upon resedimination by the same antigen, they can rapidly differentiate into plasma cells and produce antibodies, therefore triggering the immune response. With a background of how antibodies are produced, let's take a look how antibodies are deliberately developed on various platforms. Hybridoma technology has been around for almost 50 years since its invention in 1975. As of now, hybridoma is still the most commonly used technique for antibody production, outlined as follows. First, single cell suspensions are prepared from the immune organ, usually the spleen of an immunized animal, and fused with myeloma cells. Common fusion methods include PAG-mediated fusion and electrofusion, the latter of which shows higher fusion efficiency. Three types of cells exist in the cell fusion system, unfused spleen cells, myeloma cells, and the fused hybridoma. These hybridomas formed by the B-cell myeloma fusion are obtained by HAT selection and then screened with ELISA to obtain positive clones. Further dilution and screening yield immortalized monoclonal hybridomas that stably produce single antibodies. 
The disadvantages of hybridoma cells are it is a well-established methodology with very high successful rate. Um, its functionality and affinity screening can be carried out along the experiment for screening and selecting the ideal clones. The cost is relatively low since there is no special equipment is required. However, there are disadvantages of these platforms. The first of all is that the cell fusion efficiency might be low. The success rate of fusion is merely one in a thousand even for electro fusion. State suitable myeloma cell lines for cell fusion are not always available. Thus, there is a limitation in antibody species we can develop. Long life cycle, it can generally take two to three months from cell fusion to obtaining positive clones. Second generation of antibody development use phage display. It is another commonly used antibody screening technologies. In this technique, antibody genes fragments are cloned in vitro and inserted into the structure gene of the phage-coated proteins. Antibodies are then displayed on the surface of the phage via expression of fusion proteins. This step is called phage library construction. Antigens are then used to screen for a phage library for specific monoclonal antibodies, a step known as biopanning. The main steps for constructing a phage library are as follows. We extract the, the tissue RNA and derive the cDNA by reverse transcription. We obtain the antibody light and heavy chains by PCR and join them and incorporate them into phage genes. We transfect engineered bacteria with phages to amplify phages for antibody display. Specific phage screening is based on antibody antigen binding. The target antigen is immobilized on the solid phase and then incubated with the phage library for a period of time. Unbound free phages are then moved by washing, and the bound phages are eluted by enzymatic digestion using trypsin or acid or base. The eluted phages are used to infect host cells for amplification, and the absorption elution process is repeated. After three to five rounds, phages that bind specifically to antigens are obtained. Advantages of phage display is that its application in a wide range of species. The antibody library can be derived from immunized animals such as mice, rabbits, alpacas, and chickens. Antibody produced by an organism after vaccination or microbial infection or even samples from patients with autoimmune diseases. Second is that fully human antibody libraries are available and the cost is relatively low. The disadvantages of this platform is its susceptibility to the quality and the size of the FH library. There is limited affinity because most of antibodies in the library have not undergone in vivo affinity maturation leading to the limited affinity of antibodies derived from the phage display technology. Third, no natural antibodies pairing. Light and heavy chain genes are randomly recombined in the library using the affinity of obtained antibodies might be compromised. Single B cell technology um, is a recently developed technique to produce monoclonal antibodies rapidly. Um, in this technique, antigen-specific B cells are isolated from the peripheral blood or immune organs via fluorescence-activated cell sorting, also known as FACS or beacon technology. 
Specific antibody sequences are then derived by single cell PCR. The antibody sequence is incorporated into an expression vector and the monoclonal antibodies obtained by antibody expression and purification. The advantages of single B technologies include that it is not limited by species. Actually, it has applications in a wide range of species. Natural cognate VH and VL pairing is preserved. Third, it has short development cycle. Single B cell source screening is fast and a large number of candidates can be screened within a day. Lastly, antibodies from single B platform generally show higher affinity than phage display. Single B cell technology screens for memory B cells or plasma cells, which have undergone affinity maturation in vivo, giving rise to a high antibody affinity. Of course, this platform has its limitation. Single cell sorting equipment is required, thus higher cost. The following is a comparison of the two techniques based on single B cell technology, fluorescence activated cell sorting, FAX, and beacon. Fluorescence activated cell sorting can be used to screen antibodies from human, mouse, rabbit, etc. It sorts out the memory B cells. Uh, not a lot of functional validation can be done during the screening and sorting process, and the throughput is about 10,000 cells per second. For beacon platform, due to a lack of plasma cell isolation reagents, only mouse pl plasma cell isolation is available currently. As we mentioned, the FAX is based on the screening of specific memory B cells. Memory B cells are identified by binding of fluorescence labeled antigens to BCRs expressed on the memory B cell membrane. If the expression and purification of the antigens are challenging, it will be difficult to sort B cells by fax. The beacon platform is based on plasma cell screening. Plasma cells, which secrete the antibodies, have high content of intracellular antibody RNA, making it easier to obtain antibody genes. For antigens that are difficult to express and purify, beacon can screen antibodies using recombinant cell lines. Regarding the throughput of beacon, it can run four chips, a total 80,000 cells per round. Both of these platforms are high throughput platforms. Beacon is an automatic device with functions of cell incubator, biosafety cabinet, fluorescence microscope, and automated robotic arm, which in integrates microfluidics, signal detection, and light-induced technologies. Based on the morphology and the fluorescence characterization of cells, Beacon system can be used to conduct cell isolation, cell culture, real-time detection of cell secretion, and multiplex detection directly on the chip. In addition, the target cells can also be exported through beacon system. Beacon system is highly automatic and less dependent on operators. Let's take a look at the chip, which are the core component of beacon system. Operations such as cell culture, cell screening, and cell export are performed on the chips. Each beacon system can have four chips run simultaneously. Each chip consists of horizontal channels and vertical nanopans. The nanopans are connected by channels. Depending on the number of the nanopans, chips can be divided into various specifications such as 11K, 14K, or 20K. 
For example, the 14K chip can have 10 channels and more than 14,000 nanopans. And the volume of each nanopan is less than one nanoliter. During the cell culture, the cultural media will flow through the channel at relative low speed. So the nutrients in the media can enter the nanopans from the channels through the diffusion. At the same time, the wastes produced by cell metabolism can also diffuse into the channels from the nanopans and then circulate out of the chip. However, larger particles such as cells or microbeads can remain stale and not affected by the mobile phase when they enter the nanopans. So the long-term dynamic cell culture observation and analysis can be realized. Because of the volume of nanopan is in nanoliter, 10,000 volume of a single well of the 96 well plate, the concentration of the cell secretion is relative high, even at the single cell level. And therefore, the single cell level detection can be easily achieved. The antibody screening through beacon platforms generally includes five steps, um, cell import, cell screening validation tests, target cell export, and antibody gene amplification. Among them, cell import validation test and export are accomplished by the beacon system. Beacon platforms use plasma cells for antibody screening, for which the plasma cells needs to be enriched from the lymphoid tissues at first. There are usually two methods for plasma cell enrichment, fluorescence activated cell sorting and magnetic beads based sorting. Compared with fluorescence activated cell sorting, the magnetic bead sorting is faster and less damaging to cells. In view of this, magnetic bead based sorting is usually preferred. The principle of cell sorting using immunomagnetic beads is as follows. Based on the binding characteristics of cell service antigen and specific antibody coupled magnetic beads, when there is external magnetic field, the cells coupled to the magnetic beads through the antibodies are absorbed and retained in the field. And then the target cells can be isolated. Using differently labeled cells, Magnetic bead sorting generally can be divided into two categories, positive screening or selection and negative selection. In positive selection, the target cells are obtained, while in negative selections, the non-target cells are removed. Taking mouse as example, the phenotype of mouse plasma cells is CD138 positive and B20 negative. We generally use a combined selection method that integrates both positive and negative selections. That is, the B20 positive cells can be first removed by negative selection, and then CD138 positive cells can be obtained by positive selections. After two sequential rounds of positive and negative selections, the purity of plasma cells can reach 90%, and the cell variability can be maintained at 98%. Normally, we can obtain approximately 1 million plasma cells from an immunized mouse. After completing plasma cell isolation, the plasma cells can be imported into the chip. Firstly, the plasma cells are imported into the channels and unified distributed. Uniformed distributed. Next, the plasma cells in the 
channels will be put into the enamel pans using optical electropositioning OEP technology through beacon system. And meanwhile, the redundant cells in the channel will be flushed out of the chip. Finally, beacon system will automatically run the cell culture mode. During cell import, the concentration of imported cells should be paid special attention to. If the cell concentration is too high, there will be cell adhesion, leading to multiple cells in one nanopan and the production of polyclonal antibodies. On the other hand, if the cell concentration is too low, some nanopans will be empty, resulting in the decreased utilization of the chip. Here, in this video, it shows a nicely distributed chip with majority of the nanopans filled with only one single B cell. After B cells are imported, the target cells can be screened based on the principle of antigen antibody binding. The antigen coated magnetic beads and fluorescent secondary antibodies are imported into the channels. If the antibodies produced by the cells in the nanopans are the specific target antibodies, they will bind to the beads and the fluorescent secondary antibodies. We can, can catch the fluorescence beads by taking multiple snapshots and the dynamic fluorescence generation process can also be observed simultaneously. Then the positive clones can be screened out through these rounds. Since the plasma cells in the nanopans with fluorescence beads are just the positive clones capable of producing specific antibodies. Here we can show in see in this video the nanopans harboring the positive clones emit fluorescence signals that can be recognized by the beacon. In beacon system, we can also check cross -re species reactivity by replacing the antigen coded on the magnetic beads with those from other species. Uh, we just need to change the pro the protein and validate in the same way. Generally, the antigen coded on the magnetic beads are recombinant proteins, and the confirmations are not completely consistent with natural proteins. This might lead to situations where the antibody screened with an recombinant antigen might not necessarily bind to natural proteins. Besides, um, for some antigens, that are difficult to express and purify in vitro, um, such as GPCR, and we will, it's difficult for us to obtain their obtain uh, recombinant antigens with stable structures. Then we will use stable recombinant cell lines instead of the beads for antibody screening. There are two methods to perform ligand blocking validation. The first is to block the antigen coded on the beads with ligands to form stable composite microbeads. And then import these beads and fluorescent secondary antibodies into the channel. If the plasma cells in the nanopans produce antibody blocking antibodies, these antibodies cannot bind to the antigens on the beads, and then the fluorescent secondary antibodies also cannot be indirectly mixed to the beads through a specific binding, therefore resulting no fluorescence of beads. On the contrary, the beads will become fluorescent if the plasma cells producing non-blocking antibodies. Second way is that the antigen coated beads are imported into nanopans so that the antibody produced by the plasma cells combine to the antigen first. And then the fluorescence labeled ligands are imported. Similarly, if fluorescence can be captured into the nanopan, the non blocking antibodies are produced. Conversely, the blocking antibodies are produced. As shown in this figure, 
Among the four nanopins marked in the blue and the red, fluorescence was detected in those two blue nanopins. So the plasma cells in these nanopins produce non-blocking antibodies. While in no fluorescence were detected in those two red nanopins, indicating the plasma cells in these locations produce blocking antibodies. After target clones are confirmed through validation tests, the target cells can be exported. The export is also performed by using the OEP technology through the beacon system. The cells can be pushed out of the nanopins and flushed into the mobile phase. You can show it over here. It is worth noting that in addition to export target cells, be consistent can also perform reverse transcription reaction directly on the chip, that is directly obtaining the cDNA sequence of the target antibody, but the cost will be relative higher. Now, let's take a look of a couple case studies of antibody developed on Beacon system. Anti-ID antibody is an antibody that can specifically recognize the variable region of an antibody, which is widely used in the pharmacokinetic PK and pharmacodynamic studies, PD, of the antibody drugs during the drug development. For example, in PK studies, anti-ID antibodies are used to detect the levels of antibody drugs in vivo. In addition, anti-ID antibody can be used as positive control antibodies for ligand binding assays and antibody blocking assays. Anti-ID antibodies can be divided into two types, antigen blocking type, the binding site of anti-ID antibody is exactly the same as that of antibody drug and a target protein, which can be used to detect the level of free antibody drugs in vivo. The other type is the antigen non-blocking type. The binding of the antibody uh, anti-ID antibody to the antibody drug does not block the binding of antibody drug to the pro and target protein which can be used to detect the total amount of antibody drugs in the body, including free and target protein bound antibody drugs. How anti-ID antibodies are developed? During the screening of anti-ID antibodies, the binding to antibody drugs needs to be validated and excluding the binding to regular human IgG. The competitive binding to the target protein also needs to be validated. That is, whether the antibody produced is competitive or non-competitive needs to be determined. We can complete the above three validation tests on the beacon system to obtain the target positive clones. Through the rapid immunization technologies from Sinobiological, we can complete immunization tests on mice to obtain plasma cells within two weeks. Then, through the beacon, the validation of binding to antibody drugs, binding to human IgG, and compatible binding can be completed within one day. And then target cells can be obtained and explored exported. Next, the amplification of the target antibody genes can be completed within one week. Finally, expression and purification of the antibody binding test by ELISA and competitiveness validation can be completed within two weeks. The screening of positive clones only takes about 35 days, which is completed nearly two months earlier than that by traditional hybridoma technology. This shows the statistics from one of our case. After the tissues of the mice simulized with the antibody drug was harvested, cell isolation was performed to obtain humanized um, plasma cells. 
A total of 11,978 clones were imported into Beacon chips, and 772 clones were screened that confirmed to bind to the antibody drug, of which 151 clones did not bind to human IgG. After competitiveness validation with the target protein, a total of 56 clones produced competitive antibodies and 97 clones produced non-competitive antibodies. Some positive clones were selected for subsequent antibody gene amplification and antibody expression and purification. By the validation of the purified antibodies, an anti-ID antibody that could bind to the full-length antibody drug but not the human IgG was obtained. Through the competitive inhibition rate tests, non-competitive and competitive anti-ID antibodies could be further obtained. Protein modification uh, refers to the group modification of protein after translation. Um, there are protein modifications such as acetylation, ubiquitination, methylation, and phosphorylation, among which phosphorylation is the most common and important post-translational modification. The screening of phosphorylated antibodies can be carried out through the beacon platform, which can realize multiplexed detection with a short screening cycle. Phosphorylated polypeptides are used, usually selected as immunogens. During the screening of positive clones, phosphorylated and non-phosphorylated antigens will be used for compound screening respectively. And then clones that are positive for binding to phosphorylated polypeptide and negative for binding to non-phosphorylated peptide will be obtained. In this case, a total of 12,400 clones were imported and 109 clones were positive for binding to the phosphorylate polypeptide, of which 63 were negative for binding to the non-phosphorylate polypeptide. That is, 63 clones were the phosphorylated specific clones we need. CD 47 is a natural immunosuppressive molecule that is widely expressed on the surface of normal cells. By binding to SRP-alpha on the surface of macrophages, it activates the protective pathways and inhibits the phagocytosis of my macrophages. However, in order to avoid the cytosis of a macrophages, some cancer cells also imitate normal cells to express CD47, thereby inhibiting the activity of macrophages. Blocking the binding of CD47 to SRP-alpha by CD47 antibody is an immunotherapy for cancer. After the optimization of its FC region, the CD47 antibody can bind to the FC receptors of immune cells, thereby triggering ADCC, CDC, or ADCP effects, which can boost the tumor cell killing of immune cells. However, due to the high expression of CD47 on the surface of normal cells, especially erythrocytes and platelets, Earlier, CD47 antibody drugs generally caused severe anemia in clinical trials. The new generation of CD47 antibody therapy focuses on the production of fusion antibodies, such as antibodies fused to SRP-alpha, and the optimization of dosing regimens and antibody structures. In our case study, CD47 antibodies were screened using Beacon platform. After screening, there were a total 331 positive clones that could bind to both antigens and natural cells. By further expression and purification, a total of 108 antibodies were positive in ELISA tests, and 73 antibodies could block the binding of CD47 to SRP-alpha. 
Next, the validation of the binding of these antibodies to tumor cells and erythrocytes were performed, and it was found that two of the antibodies will weakly bind to erythrocytes and normally bind to tumor cells. Through affinity validation, it was found that the affinity of these antibodies screened by Beacon were almost at the same level of the reference antibodies. How about use Beacon to develop antibodies targeting virus? As the World Health Organization declared that monkeypox outbreak a public health emergency of international concern, Sinobiological developed the antigen and antibody reagents to be used in monkeypox virus studies in the first place. The A29 protein of monkeypox virus is homologous to the A27 protein of vaccinia virus with a stronger immunogenicity. It was reported that A29 protein of monkeypox virus is the target of the monkeypox virus specific monoclonal antibody and a key target of neutralizing antibodies. We use the recombinant A29 protein of monkeypox virus as the immunogen and completed the immunization of mice by rapid immunization platforms from Sinobiological. 321 positive clones were screened out by the beacon platforms and after expression, purification, and subsequent Western blotting and ELISA testing, several antibodies that can bind to the A29 proteins with high affinities were successfully obtained. Sinobiological is the one-stop international reagent supplier and service provider. We have more than 6,500 proteins and 14,000 antibodies online. We provide recombinant protein and antibody expression and polyclonal and monoclonal antibody development. Our facility is ISO certified and our users in more than 90 countries have generated over 10,000 citations relative to our products in high impact factor journals. We provide high throughput production and screening services, as well as grand level of scale up productions to generate proteins or antibodies for our customers. Moreover, we provide productions to make antibodies in various formats, such as FAB, SLV, VHH, by specific to help researchers to answer specific questions. To better facilitate our customers, Sinobiological has a global response presence. We have offices in four countries and multiple production locations. Please let us know if there is anything we can be a help for you and thank you. Thank you, Amy, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Let's get started. Our first question is, what type of research can the Beacon and Fax platform be applied to? How is it helping advance research? Um, yes. So. Beacon and fax platforms uh, can be used for many, many different types of research. Um, actually, besides the antibody discovery, as we discussed just now, um, Beacon can be used to develop cell-based products, for example, like the stable cell lines that can produce proteins with very high titer. And this development can be done with fast speed and low cost um, compared to the traditional methods, of course. Um, Beacon can also be used to characterize T-cell functionality by performing various and many kind of different functional assays. Um, and as for fax, it is a more esta established platform. Um, it can it has been widely used to identify and sort out and also enrich the desired cell populations in many different biological samples. Um, so it can be used for immunotyping, DNA cell cycle, 
to multiply the um, membrane potential ion flux cell variability and etc. At least it can go on forever. Um, and thanks for the high throughput features on both platforms, the cost and the time for developing cell lines drugs are greatly reduced. Hey, thank you. Our next question is, how does a client choose between the hybridoma platform and the single B sorting? Um, yes, that's actually, actually a question we got a, a lot um, when researchers come to us and ask uh, which platform will suit their research better. Um, both platforms can develop and provide good clones. So for hybridoma platform, um, you know, it is very straightforward and there is no need of special equipment. So basically we can perform at in, in all, all the labs um, and therefore the cost is lower. It is perfect for getting a small to medium amount of clones with high affinity. And also once you obtain the positive clones and later say if you run out of the antibody, you want to get more of it, you just need to pull out the cells and do a regular culture and purification. Um, however, the screening work in the hybridoma platforms might get overwhelming if extensive screenings or counter screenings are required. Um, so for, for example, um, there are some researchers that um, want to focus on very specific isoform and however, this targeted isoform shares quite large homology with other isoforms that he or she might want to avoid. Um, in this case, then we will need to perform a lot of counter screening, which hybridoma platforms may not be able to provide. And in this way, single B sorting will be perfect in this case because it can perform very um, a, a quite high capability of screening. In other case, um, scientists like they want to a large number of different clones, say 200 or 300, then uh, targeting the same protein to ensure they can get a good diversity of clones. So this work might be, again, too tedious and lengthy on hybridoma platforms, but single B sorting will be able to help. Um, usually I, I schedule a meeting with the researchers um, to understand their needs, specifications, timelines, and budget around the antibody development project and work with our team so that we can propose a suitable platforms for them. Okay, fantastic. Our next question here is, what is the ratio of positive clones in sorted cells and how do we increase it? The ratio of positive ones among the whole sorted cells is approximately 30 to 40 percent. Um, it depends on the serentider conditions of sorted cells and results of sorting and, you know, the following PCR and recombinant expression. So unfortunately, there are uh, loss of the clones might happen in each of the steps I just mentioned. So to increase the ratio and um, the number of positive clones we get in the end, it is, it is very, very important to make sure that the serentider is good enough to start with. Um, since if the, so imagine if the titer is low, the amount of positive clones and also the quality of clones are not expected to be high. So for titer, if it's for rabbit, we set a standard of at least 25,000 dilution and, and for mouse, 16,000 dilution. Um, and at PCR and recombinant expression stage, it is very important to have uh, stable systems that can yield good sequencing um, and pairing and, and antibody expression and purification. Perfect. Thank you. It looks like we have time for one more question. What are the challenges with antibody development usually and how are they overcome? The main challenges of um, traditional platforms are t time, through throughput, and high dependence on operators. The hybridoma platforms, like we just talked about, it takes longer time and a lot of manpower to perform fusion and screening, and the success rate heavily depends on hands. Um, 
sometimes if the experiment was not done on the optimum condition, then whole process could be ruined and time wasted. And for phage display platform, um, compared to the facts and beacon has more steps and also require higher energy to handle experiments. So um, it does not, also it does not pr produce native pairing, right? So for facts and beacon, um, they are able to solve these problems and produce a larger clone number with uh, validated attributes um, within shorter time and with lower dependence on whoever's performing the experiment. Okay. Thank you, Amy, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Sino Biological, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.